Hello, my name is Tom Walski from Bentley Systems, and today I'll be talking to you about working with SCADA data between water gems and SCADA systems. This is a popular topic these days I think you'll be interested in. We're all familiar with uh, hydraulic modeling, or else we wouldn't be in this special interest group, and we know that models are very useful for a lot of things, such as planning studies, system expansion, fire flow analysis, pressure zone layout. There's a lot of very valuable uses of modeling, but we're finding that there's more and more opportunities on the operations side, as well as in the planning and engineering side of things. And to make that work, though, we need to get data from SCADA systems and work with it, whether it's data from the current condition of the, of the water distribution system or historical data from the SCADA system. Once we have that kind of data in our model, we can start solving a whole variety of problems uh, from real-time control to operator training, preparing for shutdowns. I have several other talks I've given on this particular subject, but it, it just we open up a lot of potential for the model to be used because you do a lot of work building the model, you might, get, might as well get a lot of use out of it. Let's look at the components here. The first thing is, of course, the SCADA system, supervisory control and data acquisition. And it's great for finding out what's going on in the system and for storing data on what's happened in the system and for controlling the system. On the other hand, though, SCADA systems aren't very good for projecting into the future, extrapolating the current condition, or it can't fill in between the sparse uh, deployment of sensors that you have. And we don't always have sensors where we want them in the system. On the other hand, with hydraulic modeling, we can do things like projecting out to new cases, filling in between measured data points, and calculating attributes that are not measured by the SCADA system. The problem with models, of course, is it doesn't know what's the current status of the system or the boundary conditions or what historical measured values were in the system. But we link SCADA systems with modeling and we have some real power. Each technology complements the other technology. SCADA can provide the initial and boundary conditions for the model and the model can fill in between sensors and project what's going to happen into the future. What, what if questions? Okay. In the old days, though, when we wanted to get SCADA data in, we were stuck with the old-fashioned telemetry. So what we looked at in my early part of my career were strip charts and circle charts, and we just looked at the pen and ink drawings. We tried to read the numbers off these charts. Not very accurate, very tedious and time-consuming in the old days. So that, you know, while it was all we had, there was had to be a better way to do this sort of thing. So nowadays with SCADA systems, we have this kind of information flow. There's some kind of sensor out in the system telling us what's going on in some piece of the equipment, whether it's a tank water level or a pump flow rate or whatever. And that usually gets converted from an analog signal, usually a 40 to 20 milliamp signal, into some type of digital signal that goes into a PLC, that's a remote telemetry unit that, that gathers up the data at the uh, the site, wherever that may be. And then it goes through some communication system, whether it's a radio waves or satellite or cell phones or hardwire. Some way it gets that data back to some kind of server in the control room. And usually these servers use OPC as the standard by which they handle data. So that's OPC when you see that refers to a standard for managing control data. From there it goes into the HMI, the human machine interface. This is how the operator views what's going on and the operator sees what's happening in the system. So that's our usual data flow. Now we want to get data to the modeling system. How does the modeler get the data? Well, it goes sort of like this. Usually it has to go through some type of security or firewall. They get a file and finally it gets to the engineer modeler. And what we're trying to do is take that last step and make it simpler to not have to go through a lot of work. Because usually when you try to get this data, if you're going to be using it in modeling, you have to go to somebody who has other things to do besides serving up data for modelers. So we're trying to make this workflow a lot simpler and easier. In addition to that, if you can get access directly to the OPC server, we actually have provided ways now to get data directly out of the server that's used to store the data with inside the SCADA system. So we have multiple ways of getting at this information. Okay, so what do we use this SCADA data for? Why do we care about it? Well, it's very, very valuable for model calibration. Uh, it's very valuable for setting initial conditions for model run, either for a historical model run or a current model run. And it's very valuable for doing water audits and that type of thing, or anomaly detection to find out when the SCADA system is telling us something that's not supposed to be happening in our system. 
And here's an example of using the data uh, in calibration. And notice the red dots are the SCADA signals, and sometimes they drop out. You know, they're not always, SCADA systems aren't always perfect. I Many there are models, of course, but it takes a lot of work to get the SCADA system and model to match. And we see that there's times when they're not going to match, when the SCADA signal might be latched on to a given value, or it may just drop out and not contain a value at all, or maybe it'd be something like NAN, not a number. And there are security issues. The modelers usually work on one side of the system where they're tied into the internet and other external things, while the SCADA system is usually very secure. It's the, the, one of the main goals of SCADA folks is to make sure that the SCADA system can't be reached by anybody from the outside, because there's a lot of bad stuff that goes on out on the internet, and you don't want that getting to your SCADA system. So it's usually a firewall or some type of air gap that makes it hard to get data out. And so this is what we're faced with in this kind of work. So our data import usually works like this. We have really three different ways of bringing SCADA data in, whether it's file data or whether it's uh, OPC server data. We could just go to what we call observed data, and I'll illustrate that one in this talk. My next talk, I'll talk about what we call time series field data. And the next talk, I'll talk about our SCADA connect element. We have three, three different ways of getting at this data, and so it also can be brought into Darwin Calibrator as well. So summarizing, the model and SCADA can work together Communication between the SCADA system model is important, and maintaining security is very important. But there are a lot of benefits once you get into this sort of thing. So we'll shift gears here now and actually get into the model. But first of all, we'll look at some SCADA data. What does this stuff look like that I've been talking about? Well, here's just one example of what you might see if you do a dump. Uh, what you might see is a uh, one uh, line for every particular observation, every, every signal that you have. And so it might be a tag like this BS flow. The value might be in one column. And the timestamp may be over here. Time from start of the model run might be over here. And it's not a SCADA so don't how to create this. Sometimes you'll find that the time and date are in separate fields. So you essentially just do uh, add these two fields together and you get date and time. Now it may be hard to see this. Uh, in Excel, depending on the way Excel is set up. So you might go to format cells, and you have to go to some kind of custom format to be able to see date and time in the same field. So if you get stuck uh, saying, I want to see date and time, and all I've got are date or time, there is a way to view that kind of data. So that's what our data looks like. So things that are important is we need to know a name for the signal and the value of the signal, the, the date and time of the signal, and if we want, we also have a quality indicator of the signal. Getting into water gems now, we'll take a look at an individual model. This is a really simple one, but that's what we're trying to do is just not clutter it up with a lot of details. And let's just say we want to uh, look at the data, say, for uh, the discharge pressure of this pump station. Well, we can create a graph, and within the graph now, we'll say we'll graph pressure. We have pressure data at that point. So where you go to bring in the SCADA data would be observed data. And this opens up a dialog where you could create a new type of observed data, give it some different name, might be just P for pressure, or let's uh, be a little more creative here. Discharge. And then we got to identify what is this value. And this is going to be a pressure value, so we know how to format it. And then you go out there and use copy paste to bring in the values into our graph. Now I'll show you one that's already been created. Because uh, what we have in that data file is something like 1,700 points for every uh, particular tag. So I don't want to bog ourselves down doing some, some lengthy uh, copy and paste. But this is what it would look like once you get it open. So here's data on tank water level. The data on the uh, blue line is the model, and the SCADA signals are these red and black signals that came across. So this is what you can do with observed data. Now, this is our, our quick and dirty form of working with SCADA data, because this data now is associated with the graph. It is not a property of the element. It's just a property graph. So if you create another graph, you've got to do this import again. So it's kind of our, if you want a quick, easy way to get it and look at uh, some type of historical SCADA data for model calibration, this is good. But if you're only messing with copy-paste and has something that's a little better workflow, it's probably our, our, our low-tech type of approach to things. You see what this data looks like. We go in here. We have a name for the particular signal, the type of units they are, what numerical formatter, and then the, the data, data here. Good thing about this, too, though, you could just stick in a value of your own. You take a value that you say, well, that's a bad value. We're going to delete that one. Or you say, I know what the value was. I took a measurement there. You can insert values into this table, and they will show up in the graph. 
So it's easy to manipulate that data. You don't have to go back and manipulate the SCADA system. So that's one of our ways of working with SCADA data. We have a series of three talks. This is the first one, and we have the second one will show us, and third ones will show us different ways we can interact with SCADA data. Thank you.